You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. We're in Grants Pass, Oregon at Grange Co-op. 1934 this company started. You're gonna learn all about it and why they are doing so well to take care of their customers. They're big in garden, which you're gonna learn from Susie Marsh, one of the folks that's been here for 26 years about why they do wonderful things for their customers in the home and garden business and your basic farm and feed. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We'll meet Susie Marsh and tell you more about Grange Co-op and Grants Pass, Oregon. In the mid 1800s, America was pushing west and expanding at a rate unknown to any previous civilization. Americans pursued their dreams and unlimited opportunity, but they needed food, equipment, seeds, and tack to press on beyond the established cities and towns already settled. Out of this demand, a new retailer was born, the General Store, who handled everything a westward family would need to survive. Today, these retailers provide rural Americans the same materials, service, and expertise that made them invaluable over 150 years ago. Join Noble Outfitters as we rediscover the retailing backbone of America. Hear their story in their own words, how they've not only survived, but actually thrived in the modern world. Come along as we go On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Welcome back. I'm at Grange Co-op here in Grants Pass, Oregon, and I have with me Susie Marsh. Nice to meet you, Susie. Nice to meet you, Dan. 26 years. Yeah, 26 years I've been with the Grange Co-op. You must have been 10 when you started. <laughs> <laughs> Wish. Yeah, no, pretty close. Well, yeah. that's that's yeah. wonderful. You know, uh, actually, if you don't mind me asking, how how old were you when you actually, not, not so much about Grange, but how old were you when you first started working? When I first started working, I was right out of high school. I was working in a retail store. Yeah. And when I moved to Oregon, I went to work for um, Josephine Growers, which was a real tiny little feed store. Okay. And that was in 1990. And then in 1996, it merged with Grange Co-op. So I've been oh, with it so since you were, it was uh, the tiniest little store. So you were a gift with purchase. Yes. Uh, you, <laughs> came with the, you came with the purchase yeah. when they expanded. So, you know, I've been all over the country and looking at the different farm and feed stores and the, the old general stores and the mercantiles, and this one has an extensive garden center. Yes, um, it does. B bigger than I've seen at, at most stores. In fact, uh, I don't know if you guys get much theft, but this was on one of your fig trees, and I... And now it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I like stealing fruit, so anyway, <laughs> I'm going to... you mind if I... Well, I'm going to, you know, take, now it, that I've, take it upon myself to let that be our gift to you. Oh, thank you. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the garden center is beautiful, and, uh, and, and how did that come about? I mean, a lot of times people say, well, the reason we're doing this is because that's what our customers wanted. So we end up just making what the customers want. Well, and, and there is a, you know, a very um, big desire for the plants in this, in this area. It's growing, and to be able to supply for the homeowners, the plants and kind of things they want. We have vegetables for the gardeners that are growing vegetables. We have organic vegetables for the people that are doing organic gardens. Oh, that's big today. Yes, it is. So tell me a little bit about what I'm gonna see when I go into the store, because there's so many different products in the store. The store is huge it's and it's huge. beautiful. So we what are a, the different segments? We have a beautiful clothing section. We have a very extensive lawn and garden section with you know every kind of chemical and organic chemicals and fertilizers. We have a nice hardware section. We have uh, Liberty safes and uh, DZ truck boxes. We have a beautiful pet section, lots of different types of dog food, uh, cat food, wild bird section. We even have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Are there wild birds here? We have wild birds here. Oh, I'd love to see the wild birds. Well, not our own particular ones, they're just outside. I, oh, but, I but see. But people I like see. to okay. feed them and they feed the squirrels and we have food for the squirrels and the deer and, you know, we have feeds for all animals here. Well, that's great. Well, I'd love to look around the store, see a little bit more, and uh, and come back and visit with you, and then we'll do the focus group and uh, have some fun today. Sounds great. You know, uh, right off the garden center, then you've got all the garden supplies. Right, we which have all is, of our lawn and garden right over here. Which is great, and then you've got tons of clothing, tons, all of the different types of clothing. And I see you got some good-looking Noble Outfitters product. Yes, we do. Yeah, we love that. You know, we were just talking about customer. 
and how the customer means everything to us. We listen to the customer, you listen to the customer, that's how you ended up with all this stuff. But here's a good example, like this shirt, this riding shirt. If you'll notice that fabric underneath the arm of that shirt, it's different than the fabric up here. It's a very, very lightweight mesh that's very, very breathable and lets air through, and it's a high wicking material. So basically, when you sweat, you've got your show shirt on, your show jacket on, that sweat just immediately evaporates away from your body so that it keeps you comfortable under your show jacket. What an excellent idea this is. And that just comes from listening to the customer over and over and over. So we're definitely gonna have some fun at the focus group today because I can guarantee you, at the focus group today, here in the store, we will get some ideas and you'll see those spring 18 come into the store. So you'll see the idea, the light bulb go off, and then you're gonna see it come around and you're gonna see it come into the store because it'll happen in that focus group. I really appreciate you putting that together. You're so welcome. That's gonna be fun. Hey, you've got a lot of store to look at here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look around and just kind of make myself at home if you don't mind. And Absolutely. Then, and then I'll track the, uh, the executives down and we'll learn a little bit more about Grange Co-op and the history since 1920. 1934. 1934, okay. So that's great. We'll be able to meet the boys and talk a little bit more about the history, and uh, and then I'll hook up with you later when we do the uh, when we do the focus group. Sounds good to me. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, and you'll meet the executives that are running this program at Grange Co-op in just a moment. Welcome back. We're going to introduce you to the CEO, Barry. Good to How meet you, doing? Dan. <laughs> Norm, yeah. pleasure to meet you. I just I'm fascinated by how these companies get started and, and the ages of the companies, right? It's just, it's fun to learn about and talk about. You fellows have seen so much change and, and so many things with Grange Co-op, but, but give us the history. I mean, how did it, how did it all get started? Yeah, uh, it's a great story. It's an American success story. Uh, throughout the, the whole nation, a lot of farm supply co-ops got started um, after the depression. And for us, it was 1934. 99 farmers got together from this local area and each put in ten dollars to create Grange Co-op. <laughs> That's great. And basically the co-op meant we're going to take all the collection of all of our products, br bring them to a spot where they can be sold and distributed from so that we could, because on our own we're not big enough to do that, but as a co-op, but as a group of 99 farmers, we can create something pretty good. So at that point, did they say, look, you grow this and I'll grow that and you grow this and we'll kind of mix it up so that we have a great product line? The, the, all these products were further down the line. The very first immediate need was petroleum. So the very first thing they did was uh, get a petroleum outlet, a petroleum tank. And one of their first problems was uh, they would, the driver would talk to uh, the customer so much as they were filling up the buckets full of petroleum that you'd forget how many uh, buckets were put in. <laughs> that was before, and so, before gauges. And right. <laughs> so they had to get a wire and some beads and every time they dump the bucket in, the move a bead over so <laughs> like there are the no old problems. abacus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, visiting the store, it was great to see that uh, a huge garden center, uh, beautiful garden centers. And I think that, that that's a little bit of a different story uh, about uh, you know a, a co-op and then the expansion. I mean, obviously, you're not doing anything you were doing back in you know '34. You know, it's it's all new, it's all different, mm -hmm. it's all expanded, and you're taking care of your customer. But uh, but you mentioned uh, fertilizers and things that, that that the company's into in a big way. Yeah, in 1966, we put in our own fertilizer plant, and it's still the only one in Southern Oregon. And then we developed the Rogue brand name. Okay. Tell me some of, of the stories that you guys had to go through and some of the, some of the trials and tributes that you had to get through uh, to make the program work because the economy wasn't always great all the time. You know, there were big dips in the economy and, and issues that, uh, you know, had to make sure everybody stuck together and made, made it work. Yeah, it was pretty rough coming out of the Depression. Um, some of our biggest challenges have actually been with fires. Uh, we have a big feed elevator that was built in... Um, 1947 
and uh, it burnt completely down to the ground in 1961. Wow. And then 20 years later, our newest store that we had just built in Medford uh, burnt to the ground as well. So through both of those fires, we overcame a lot of adversity. Our customers still patronized us at our other locations. A lot of our employees assisted in the cleanup and rebuilding. Uh, nobody had to lose their job and we persevered. And yeah. that's how it's like with the co-op. Right. Well, you, you know, you, you mentioned well, coming out of the Depression, you know, so the company started at probably the worst possible time, you know, for a company to get started. But one of the reasons it got started at that time is because of the Depression. Right. And they all had to band together and, and do what they yeah. could to be a company on the whole. And, and they're still doing it. I yeah. mean, that's, that's a wonderful thing. So how many members of the co-op are there now? Um, agricultural members, we have probably around 2,500 and then we have about 30,000 people that are doing business on a patronage basis. So they get ownership in Grange Co-op as well. That's amazing. Great story. I mean, it's just fun. It's America, right? Yeah. It's how, it's how we built this country. It's, uh, it's what it's all about. Well, great. I really appreciate the hospitality again. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we hope to see you all again very soon. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Coming up next, you're going to taste something from the Grants Pass area that you're going to really enjoy the recipe for because it's a local product that's grown specifically here. And I'm going to taste it for you, and I'll tell you how good it is. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, Mark. Have you seen Dan? It's hey. almost time for our focus group. Yeah, let's go look for him. I know he's out in the garden, so let's take a look. Probably after another one of those figs. Oh, you know Dan. He loves that fruit. There he is. Hey. Dan. Dan, wake up. Hey, 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 whoa. Ah, you know, after walking that store, I think I needed a little nap. That's a huge store. It's a big one. Beautiful. It's great. And uh, I, did, I did find another fig also. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not a problem. <laughs> You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. And for this week's segment of the recipe of the week, you're absolutely going to see and hear something that's uh, heartwarming, not just a wonderful recipe that you'll all receive. Um, but we're going to talk about food and life and food and giving and food and love. And uh, it, it's a very, very, very heartwarming story here. I have with me Karen Amaratico. And Karen has created a company called Pie a Day Giveaway. And I want you, Karen, to tell us a little bit about how this came about. And, and I also want to talk about how maybe other people could do what you're doing around the country because it just, I mean, almost just like brings tears to my eyes just to hear about it. And, and I just want you to say, how did this start? Where did this come from? Looking for a gratitude project. I tried a couple of different things and went to sleep one night knowing I was going to make a quiche for somebody the next day. And at two in the morning, I sat up and decided I would give a pie a day away for a year as an act of gratitude for, for life, for being healthy for living right. where I live. All I mean, those when you things. when you give someone food, if you think about it, us as 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 people, right? I mean, we are. If we don't eat, we don't live, right? So if you think about hunger or just like something to eat, it's it's a complete, you know, heartfelt program that people will tell you basically. Look, there's somebody. It's their birthday. Uh, somebody just had a baby. Uh, somebody's suffering from an illness and they go to your website and they say, I want you to s send a pie to my friend Sally. And you get the address, you make the pie, you arrange the delivery and you take it. Take Actually, it. you take it to the person, right? Yeah. So the story you were telling me about the, the little lady that was suffering from cancer and you found out that her friend, uh, you know, told you what she would like. Tell me a little bit about that story, because that, that's the crux of the whole program. So she was suffering from cancer. My friend Ellen said she would love a bacon quiche. And I said, okay, I will make it. And she let her know that something would be coming. She didn't say what. And I show up at the house, and she was in a wheelchair at that time. And she rolls out, and the caretaker lets me in, and he said, she's here to meet you and she brought you something. 
And she kind of looked and grimaced up and said, who are you? And I said, my name is Karen. Ellen sent me and she asked to bring you a quiche Lorraine. And it was like she rose six inches in the chair, this amazing smile. You made me a bacon quiche? I did, I did. And put it down in front of her and she, the transformation was amazing. Yeah. And most times when I leave, I'm crying all the way home. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it was such a gift yeah. to be present. Absolutely. Well, what a great thought. And, you know, and piadaygiveaway.com. And if you think about it, if somebody else wanted to do this, would you mind them sending you a message? And, no, I had, and, somebody and, told me she did, She I don't know if she did it for a year, but she took the idea. And maybe and they could maybe do one a, a week month. or one a month even or whatever, but you're going to light up some some smiles if you're going to bring somebody a pie. I mean, this is a, a beautiful pie here. We're going to talk a little bit about this pie and how it's made with local uh, fresh pears and, 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 and a little bit about that. But but I really would, would love it for people to visit the website and then also learn, you know, from you how you did it, what were the trials and tributes, and, and all the stories about what it did to make people so happy. But uh, it's just a wonderful thing to give food, okay? I mean, that's, that's a great idea. So tell me a little bit about this wonderful pie here because I, I kind of tasted it a touch, but I'm going to get more into it. So it's a pear tart. There's red denju pears, and I did a cookie crust, and then I did a cream cheese base, and then I put the pears, and then I did toasted almonds at top. So it's a little, it recognizes Oregon for being a great pear grower. Wow, that's, that's delicious. You know, crust is so big with the pie. After making a pie a day, you probably got like the crust down, huh? Because you know, that cookie it's... crust is amazing. Thank you. What about some recipes? Can I offer some recipes to our folks out there that watch the show? Because sure. every week we do a recipe of the week. They can go on nobleoutfitters.com slash RFDTV and get our recipes. But what I would love for you to do is, is give me a few recipes of some of your favorite pies and also a crust recipe. Because the crust to me is that it's the most difficult thing to because when you get everything and it's on that crust and the crust is soggy or it's not right, you know, you're out of luck. So I'd love to get a great crust recipe for you, share that with our viewers. And just sharing this, this heartfelt thought of giving the pie, taking it to the people, that was a wonderful thing for us to share, Karen. And and I really think, you know, for the viewers out there, you know, we're talking about, you know, our, our audience is, you know, they're they're farm folks, right? So it's 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 farm and it's it's, it's rural people and it's just a, a warm gesture that I think is a wonderful wonderful thing. So how many pies have you made? Over five hundred. Over five hundred pies. Given away. And delivered them. Yes. Okay. So if I go to your website and say it's Dan's birthday, December fifteenth. Don't forget that. And I'm gonna say uh, this is Dan writing on behalf of Dan. But I'd really like a pie, and here's my favorite. And you know, what do you think? How about you mail it to me? You know, the pies that I mailed were not this kind of pie. I did cookie crusts. Okay. And maybe um, brownie pies. Okay, make me something. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll I'll send you an email and remind you. What a wonderful story! You're on the road with Noble Outfitters, Karen. You're beautiful. Your company's beautiful. Don't forget to go to the website piadaygiveaway.com and take a look at what Karen's doing and possibly you could do that yourself. Thank you for listening to this segment and, and thank you Karen for sharing your story with us. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters coming up next, the noble child of tomorrow. We've got Josie North and she's going to talk about all the animals she's raising and having fun doing it and winning some medals. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I have an extreme pleasure of meeting Josie North today. Josie, how are you? Good. And you are all of 10 years old, right? Yes. You're a busy little beaver though. Yeah. You've got a lot of animals. Yes. You've got a vegetable program that you've worked on. You're doing lots of different stuff. Tell me about your animals. How, how did that get started? Well, we were just going to, I was just going to have like a little goat farm and have a breeding project going for next year. And then 
I bought an unbread dough. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one morning to surprise baby goats. So then... How many baby goats? Two. Plus. So you didn't know this was going to happen. No. Next thing you know, now you got three. Yeah. Cool, little but babies. it was good for three for the price of one. That's, I like it. Yeah. You got a good deal. Yeah. And so then one of them turned out to be my market goat. And the other is another breeding doe. Okay. And, and now how many animals do you have? I have six. Six animals that you're taking care of. You're going to show some of them. Yeah. Um, lots of responsibility. And you've won some ribbons. Tell me about your wins that you've had out there. Well, I got reserve champion for my for breeding doe for goats. I got reserve champion on my table setting, and I got reserve champion in my junior showmanship for goats. Great, that's huge. Yeah, and then I got I put in a cookie and some vegetables for my cookie chocolate chip cookie. I got third place on it. I got first place and reserve champion on my peppers and I got junior <laughs> grand champion grand champion and people's choice in first place on my market basket I mean that's great you're 10 years old you have all this activity going on and again you know our show when we talk to people like yourself usually you know 10 12 years old 8 years old sometimes they're always busy they're doing things they're learning things and it's important for me to, to try and tell the kids that are out there that, you know, one of the most important things we need to do is when you're young, be busy, stay busy, uh, learn things, do things. And, uh, you know, the average age of a kid getting his first job is 18 years old, which is like you're 10, you know. I mean, you already have like three jobs. So what are you going to do when you get older? What do you aspire to do? Well, I want to be the first female president. Really? So, well, that means uh, Hillary isn't going to make it, uh, so we, you're not voting for her, right? <laughs> we, we don't want to get we don't want to get political here. Okay. So anyway, um, you want to be the first female president, yes. and if you're not the first, you'll be another female president. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think if you put your mind to it, with all the things that you've got going on, and all the things that you're trying to do and keep track of, you could. You could do it, you know, you just put your mind to it and you could do it. The, the beauty of being here in this country mm -hmm. is that you can do anything you want. If you put your mind to doing something, then just go do it. You know, there are countries out there that that's not the case. You know, I mean, it's like you couldn't just go do what you want. You couldn't go learn what you want because it's restricted. You know, so we, we're blessed to be here in the United States of America where we could do anything we want. You can do anything you want. You're already doing anything you want mm -hmm. at 10 years old. So I really, I really appreciate that you're out there working and, and setting kind of an example for the other kids that are out there. Because a lot of times the kids are just home playing the video games and yeah. doing too much of that. So do you have a bank account? Are you saving some money? Yes, I do. Yeah, I have, how much you got in your bank account? I have about over $4,000 with like Christmas money, birthday money. and $4,000? Um, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to put much of a dent in that, but I want to give you I want to give you a gift from Dan, and I want to give you a hundred dollar bill. Thank you. You're very welcome, and I want you to put that in your bank, and I want you to remember that you know you've got to save your money and keep getting that bank account growing so that you can one day go to college, be able to do anything you want to do, get that education, keep moving yourself forward, and do anything you want and maybe be the next woman president of the United States. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. you too. Thank you very much for your time. You keep doing Thank great things out me. there and we'll see each other soon. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. We've had a wonderful time here in Grants Pass, Oregon at the Grange Co-op. Wonderful people, beautiful store, tremendous community here that they've built. You've got to stop by and see these folks if you're ever in this beautiful community of Grants Pass. Beautiful products, great people, and you'll have a blast, I can guarantee you. Join us next week. You'll never know where we're going to be, but pardon me. Grange Co-op. Yes, we do. Uh, do we have? Yes, we do have that. Right, we have everything. Come by and see us. We even got some great pie over here.
Come by and see us. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. I'm working here now at Grange Co-op. I'll be back later. Bye.